Hi, Bert the Maker Barn again, uh, continuing this, uh, this uh, series on the Bridgeport Mill. And today, what I'd like to do is talk about end mills. <clears throat> end mills are the, the, the main tool we're going to be <clears throat> using on the, uh, on the Bridgeport. So you know, everybody uh, has been asked, who's going to be certified for use on the end mill, to buy one of these uh, sets. And uh, this is kind of nice. It's, uh, they're inexpensive, about $60, $70 on Amazon, that sort of place. And, uh, uh, it's got uh, 10 four flute end mills and 10 two flute end mills, and uh, we'll talk about that in a while. It's it, they're inexpensive, Chinese made, and uh, as time goes by, these will wear out. You know, I'm I'm, I'm sure they're not uh, as good as a U.S. made, but uh, they're not nearly the price. So, uh, as time goes by, you can replace them with uh, good quality end mills, the ones that you use mainly for your projects. Anyway, uh, let's get going, and we'll take a good detailed look at these end mills. All right, let's start, let's start off taking a look at the end mills that, that come in that set. Um, this is a, a two flute end mill, and I'll put it real close. It, it's center cutting. You can plunge with it, in other words. Um, and uh, this is a single ended end mill. We'll talk about double ended here in just a little bit. But uh, it's uh, what they call tin coating, which is really a titanium nitride. And uh, that helps uh, the chip slide across the surface a little better. So it's, uh, uh, you can see this one's been used a good bit. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, it's, uh, th these, are, these are very good. They have a lot of chip clearance. You can see all the space in here that the chips can clear out. And that's the main advantage of these. Uh, these. Uh, here's a four flute. And your kit's going to come with... Uh, Four of these four flutes, and they're, um, they're they're center cutting as well. You can see this comes all the way across the middle, so you can plunge with these. And again, this is titanium nitride coated. And uh, a lot of people think that, um, and I, I know that you know, machinists kind of tend to say, okay, these two flutes are intended for aluminum, and these four flutes are intended for steel. Now, I agree that two flutes work well work really well on aluminum and most aluminum I'll machine with this especially when I'm larging, uh, removing large amounts also these are best where you're cutting a slot because only one cutting edge will be cutting at a time so it's less apt to chatter than say a four flute four flute will actually have a, be cutting on the front and on the side at the same time so that can lead to more chatter uh, that being said uh, if I'm going to do a deep um, a, a deep slot, I'll use the two flute. If I'm going to do, do a shallow slot like you'd use for a keyway, for a, uh, uh, for a shaft or something like that, you know, the, the, for a, uh, a key to hold a pulley on or whatever, um, those, are, those tend to be sh rather shallow and I would uh, I'd prefer the four flute. The four flute, if you can look at the cross section, you can see that these are a lot stronger than the two flute. So they won't flex as much, but then again, in other you know times, they can, they can actually cause chatter. Um, what else? Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, four flutes are great if you're going to even on aluminum. If you're going to surface the edge of something where you have a lot of chip clearance out here, they make a very fine because the four flutes they'll they'll tend to make a finer cut. Anyway, that's uh, these are single. Like I said, these are single ended end mills now. You can also get them in the double-ended variety. Uh, and here's a couple examples right here. These are both quarter inch. And you can see they're, they're double-ended. So you get, uh, get twice the, uh, <laughs> the end mills. And it is more efficient uh, use of the material. Sometimes uh, single-ended are better than double-ended in certain occasions where you need to be able to Say, uh, there's times when I've had to, for instance, uh, hold this in a chuck to drill a hole on the lathe because on the lathe and the tailstock, that's all you've got. Now, that being said, it's important to understand that you should never hold these in a chuck for milling operations. That's because a shank of an end mill, unlike that of a drill bit, is hardened as hard as the rest of it. So these will these will ruin a drill chuck in, uh, in short order if you try making the uh, milling type cuts with them, hold them in a drill chuck. Um, 
couple other things here. Let's see. Uh, here's another four flute. Let's take a look. This is this is not a center cutting. So if you see this kind of thing, don't try to plunge with it because obviously it's not going to cut on the inside and it will just come up against a, a little post that it generates and uh, that that you know that'll stop wherever you're at and probably get, tend to overheat things. But um, uh, but uh, that's uh, these are less expensive typically. You know it's. Uh, and you find these more in larger sizes, like a three-quarter or one inch, you know, they're typically used for surfacing rather than plunging operations. If you want to plunge with this, you can do that, but you just have to make sure you, you pre-drill a hole that's at least the diameter of that center uh, cutout area. And you, you can plunge with them at that, that, at that point. Okay. And uh, in mills come all different ways. This is, uh, this is one that's specifically made for aluminum. You see it has very high helix very fast rate, move chips quickly, but you can see how long it is and you can get way down inside something. And, uh, but uh, this is a you know, nice end mill and, uh, but not for general purposes. It would uh, tend to chatter too much. So it's great if you're working down inside a big cavity. They even make end mills that have, uh, that are carbide. This is a carbide insert. Of course, you can get solid carbide end mills, and you can get cobalt end mills. Cobalt in, these are high-speed steel. Uh, cobalt end mills would look about the same. Um, they're, they're usually referred to as M42, and uh, they're a bit more expensive. They're, they last longer. They hold up to abrasion better, but uh, they are a good bit more expensive and a little bit more brittle because of hardness. Now, if you get a solid carbide end mill, those things will cut through almost anything, and uh, but again, they don't they don't bend at all. They they'll snap, so you have to be careful with those. Now this is kind of a compromise here with the insert. You have a hard carbide insert in this, and you can see the depth of cut is pretty limited. But um, these will cut. This is this I probably bought for. Uh, you got to cut some uh, some flats on some uh, hardened chrome shafting. That, <laughs> so. Uh, that's a, I use this sort of thing for that. And uh, another type of end mill is a roughing end mill. Those are serrations around the side. This makes very tiny chips. And uh, these aren't, we wouldn't tend to use this on aluminum. Uh, it, would, it would still kind of clog up on aluminum, but on steel, this thing can really remove a lot of material. Now, it leaves a rather rough surface. You'll have to come back with a normal end mill to clean it up. but. Uh, but that's a roughing end mill. And uh, this one is rather fine. This is, a lot of them have much coarser uh, serrations than that. Now, end mills can also be used for specialty cuts. And uh, let's start off with this one. This is a uh, ball end mill. You see it has a ball end. The, this, is a, uh, this is a cobalt, by the way. This is a 5 8 uh, radius, 5 8 diameter. Actually, 5 8 diameter is what it is, yeah. 5 eighths R is not, but anyway, it'd be a uh, 5 sixteenths radius. And anyway, uh, so this is 5 eighths, it, it would have a, this, the radius of this matches the radius of the cutter. And uh, it's handy for making little pockets, that sort of thing. Uh, these are very rugged, by the way, and sometimes they can be used as a roughing end mill because of the fact that, that, that it is so strong, it doesn't have the delicate little points like a normal end mill would have. This, this, when you, usually when you dull an end mill, what you're really doing is you're chipping off these little corners. But uh, this doesn't have a corner, so it could be pretty rough. Now if you need, that's, that's for an inside. And you could use this for shaping the outside of a, of a piece if you wanted a, a, a concave edge, that sort of thing. Looks, works pretty nice. And these are generally ground to a very high degree of accuracy, so they're, they're pretty dependable on the size. Now here's a, a corner rounding end mill. And uh, these aren't particularly efficient at chip removal, so you've got to take it easy with them. You can see there's very little space there for a chip removal, but these will round, round the corner of an object and uh, give you a nice finish. Uh, let's see, it. another kind of shaping type end mill. Is th this, is, this is a pretty neat thing. As you can see, I don't, hopefully you can read that. It's, um, 
60, 60 degrees on this end, 90 degrees on this one. This is not a countersink. It's actually a, a, a chamfering tool. So I could, generally I would chamfer, 90 degrees would be a 45 degree half angle. So I could come along and make a nice 45 degree chamfer on, on a part. Or if I need 60 degree, I, I've got it. And uh, I think that this is actually chipped off the end a little bit. Um, but anyway, this is a, it's a nice tool and something you might want to consider for some of your projects. Now, uh, here's another thing. This is a dovetail cutter. Now, these are available in various angles. Uh, this particular one is 60 degrees and it's three quarter inches in diameter. And uh, if you want to make a cut dovetails for whatever kind of reason, uh, it's like you're making a, a tool holder that fit on the Aloris type tool post, you can use this sort of thing. You probably need a bigger, bigger one than this. But a lot of times we want to make something that fit up nicely, uh, joints that slide together, that sort of thing. The dovetail is a nice, nice way to go. There's some interesting uh, ways of measuring dovetails, and we'll probably cover that in a later, later video. And uh, the last one I have here is a, a Woodruff key cutter. And uh, made in Yugoslavia. It's a uh, number 406. This is for a number 406 Woodruff key. And uh, I haven't measured this particular one, but I would guess it would be about an eighth inch by maybe three quarters of an inch. And uh, these are great not only for making, cutting, making a Woodruff key, let's say in a slot in a, in a shaft, where you'd come up and, and, and make, cut a Woodruff key kind of like this, a slot. But also, if you need to do undercuts, um, I don't have any way of describing that, but if you, if you need to make a, a cut that goes, uh, that is actually undercut, you can do that a little bit. And actually, if it's not too, you can go pretty deep if, you, if it's not too wide in this area, you can see that. And uh, you have to be careful. Now, these, th th this kind of tool, these aren't cheap. So um, you have to be careful with them when you use them. Uh, the uh, dovetail, especially as these tips are, are very delicate so what you would normally do is cut a slot with a normal end mill and then come up finish it up to, to make the dovetail shape on, on the slot just removing the uh, amount for the uh, that's required for the dovetail anyway that's uh that's some various end mills that you can get and uh and, and, and these things are uh available well you can get them online or uh, uh here in town bass tool or or uh, one of the other tool suppliers can, can get these for you. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the short little video, and uh, see you next time.